Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have another video where we're trying to explain why does the dielectric affect the capacitor. And in addition to that, we're going to see how it affects the electric field, the voltage across the capacitor, and the energy stored in the capacitor. So again, what we have here pictorially, we have first a capacitor that's hooked up to a battery. This is the symbol for a battery, so the voltage supply pushes charges onto a capacitor. We then disconnect the capacitor such that the charge remains on the capacitor and we can then see that the electric field between the plates is defined as the charge density on the plate divided by epsilon sub naught because we have just air in between the plates and the what we call the dielectric constant for air is nearly one like it is in free space. And then we can say that the charge density is the charge divided by the area, so we can express the electric field between the plates as the charge divided by epsilon sub naught, which is the permittivity of free space, divided by the area of the plates. Now we insert a dielectric in there, which means that the molecules inside dielectric will rearrange themselves, they will bend around or rearrange themselves, so that the negative ends will point towards the positive charge of the plate, and the positive ends will point towards the negative charge in the plate, thus setting up an induced electric field, which then points in the opposite direction, thus reducing the net effect of the electric field between the plates. If the net effect between the plates is reduced, the interaction between the positive charges on the one plate and the negative charge on the other plate then gets reduced because the weaker electric field and then the, the final electric field can then be calculated to be sigma divided by k times epsilon sub naught, k being the dielectric constant and since k is bigger than one the final electric field will then be smaller than the initial electric field matter of fact we can calculate that for example the q divided by epsilon times A is in, in essence equal to the initial electric field, so the final electric field is therefore equal to 1 over K times the initial electric field, since E initial is equal to K epsilon sub naught divided by A. And so now we see then that the final electric field is reduced by the factor of K. If K is 5, the final electric field is only 1 fifth. If K is 80, like in the case of water, then the final electric field will only be 1 80th of what it was before you insert the water in between the plates. Now, of course, you've got to be careful with the water that there's, that's pure water, so there's no conductivity at all between the plates by placing in pure water there. So, how does that also affect V final and energy final? So, V final is equal to question mark, energy final is equal to question mark. How is that related? Okay, well, first of all, the voltage across the capacitor can be defined as follows. So let's uh, go ahead and talk about V final, like this. And so we can say that the electric field, or better yet, I can say the voltage, let me, I'm starting with the wrong variable here, but uh, let's start with the voltage is defined as E times D. Right, that's the definition of the voltage between capacitor plates. It's the strength of the field times the distance between the plates. And so what we can say is that the initial voltage is equal to the initial electric field times the distance between the plates. Now, the distance between plates is not going to change, but the electric field is going to change. Because now we can say that V final must be equal to E final times D, and, v, and E final is 1 over K times E initial. So V final is equal to E final, which is 1 over K times E initial times D. And E initial times D, well, that's equal to V initial, which means that V final is therefore equal to 1 over K times V initial. In other words, the final voltage across the capacitor, and remember, it's no longer connected to the battery, otherwise the battery could pump in more charges and keep the voltage the same. But if it's no longer connected to the battery, then the final voltage across between the plates is now going to be 1 over K times initial voltage. So by inserting a dielectric, you're reducing the voltage between the plates. Therefore, we can say that the capacitance is going to change. And also we can say that the energy is going to change when we insert a dielectric. So how do we write that? Well, we know that the energy is defined as one half 
Q times V, and the initial energy, before we put the dielectric in there, is going to be defined as one-half Q times the initial voltage. Remember that Q can change because we've disconnected the battery, so no charge can either be added or removed from the capacitor. Now, we know that the final energy, okay, so E final, is therefore going to be equal to one-half Q times V final. And V final can be defined as 1 over K times V initial. So E final is equal to 1 half times Q times 1 over K times V initial. And then if I pull out a 1 over K, we have 1 half Q V initial, which is, of course, E initial. So E final is equal to 1 over K times what would be 1 half Q V initial. And that means that E final can then be defined as 1 over K times E initial. Wow, that's an interesting concept because if the final energy is less than the initial energy, it doesn't require work to insert the dielectric. The, the dielectric will basically be pulled in, don't have to push any force into it, the dielectric once you put the dielectric there, it will get pulled into between the capacitor plates with the result that, first of all, the final electric field will be 1 over K times initial electric field. The voltage between the plates will be equal to 1 over K times initial voltage. And the energy stored in the, in the capacitor will be 1 over K times the original energy, which means the electric field, the voltage, and, oh, wait a minute. Hmm. I shouldn't do that. I'm going to confuse people by using E here instead of using E, instead of using E for energy, which I tend to always do. I shouldn't do that when we're dealing with electric fields. In this case, I'm going to show you that the energy using U, like that, so we don't confuse anybody, the energy stored on the capacitor is 1 over K times, and of course we should change this as well, the initial energy like that. So that way I'm not confusing as many people. And that's how it's done. Should, should I redo that section? <laughs>